Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. I have been sent this sat nav here to do a review on. Uh, yeah, another review for you guys. Um, so yeah, let's get it installed and see what's what. So sat nav's installed and I've moved it from the right hand side of the truck where I normally have it on the steering, to the right of the steering wheel, it's now in the middle of the truck. So it's easier for you guys to see it on the other camera. Now it's a seven inch screen. My other sat nav that I have is a nine inch screen. So this one's slightly smaller. So when it's over on the right hand side of the truck, just above the uh, light switches on the, uh, on the DAF, then you can see perfectly fine the, the screen. Uh, and it takes up that little bit less space. So uh, yeah, it's a little bit better from that point of view for me, what I think. Um, when I switched it on, I realized it had exactly the same software that my current sat-nav has. So I'm already sold on it. I already know that it's gonna be a good sat-nav. Now, when you first switch the sat-nav on, this is the screen that you will see and hopefully you can see that nice and clear. Uh, you've got time and date settings, GPS information, but of course the one that you're going to use the most is the GPS navigation. So if we click that, it takes just a few seconds to load up. It's a bit like an app on a phone effectively, so it just needs to load up, load up the software. And then you're greeted with this screen here. Now you can change the different types of profiles and stuff like that here as well, but you can also, as needed, set length, width, length width and height you can say whether you've got a trailer how many axles you've got and your weight and your maximum weight as well as whether you are carrying any sort of hazardous substance as well and then it will automatically route you to avoid restrictions on those roads there we click back down here so i've currently got mine set up as a lorry with a maximum speed of 55 miles per hour which is slightly less than what my truck will actually do i've got the length set at 60 feet just left it as that because that's what it's set as a standard i know we are slightly shorter 8.2 feet wide i think that's about right you need to double check that and uh 14 foot 6 which is the height of the trailer that i've got on at the moment uh, six axles three on the trailer three on the unit and I always leave the actual weight at 44 tons because that way then I know that I'm not going to have any issues regarding weight limits and stuff like that not very many places that we go to will have a weight limit to worry about from that point of view it's usually the seven and a half ton and the 18 ton weight limits that we'd come up against but of course it knows we weigh more than that so it should divert around them wherever possible of course some of these places that we're going to are inside weight limits or except for access except for loading areas so it is aware of that as well we press done and that brings us to this screen here from this screen here we've got the option to program our destination routing options uh, more information if i press more for a moment that brings up a media player, picture viewer, information around sunrise and sunset. There's a calculator in here as well. Just extra little things that you may or may not need to use. On my old sat nav, I never used any of them. They were just features that were included. Routing options. So we can create a route from here. We can view our route, check what avoidances there are, or we can cancel the route. So let's get a route programmed in we're going to go back to here we're going to click destination now we can go via the history we can find on a map other places that are I've been to or we can find an address so if we click find an address for now and then country United Kingdom I've got the UK version of this you can get it with European maps or depending on the country that you're purchasing in, it will come with those maps on it, obviously. Click the city. Now, of course, this is going to search via the postcode. Let's program it for the yard. SP1031. H. 
E and trying to do this whilst looking around the camera as well. Now, you need to put the space in the postcode, otherwise it doesn't show up. And you will have noticed as well, as I was typing, uh, options were appearing and letters were disappearing. So you know that if you've got the postcode wrong, it's not going to let you press that key. So you're not trying to navigate to somewhere where it doesn't exist. Let's click the postcode and then select the town down the bottom. Now that's taking me to the road where my yard is and that little road that goes off up to the right here is the entrance to my yard. So I can actually click there and then when I approach this junction it will tell me also to navigate down this road here. If this is somewhere where I go on a regular basis, of course I go to my yard all the time, I can press more and add to the favourites and as you'd expect I'll be able to type it in a name, click done. That's going to then put the little star on it and then I can press go. It's then going to confirm my parameters. I'm going to press OK. Now it's telling me that part of this route requires a special permit. The road that we go down to the yard is a restricted access road, but of course it's our access, that's why it's restricted. Press OK and then that brings up the route. Very simple, very easy to use. If you've ever used a sat nav, you're not going to get it wrong but giving you an idea that you do need to put that space in the postcode, otherwise it won't find that postcode at all. If we press the menu button here now, we can go to that route option and we can see an overview of the route. So this wants me to go down to the bottom of the uh, A34 and then back up to get back to the A303 to head towards Andover. We can go back we can edit the route, see what avoidances there are, if there's any that we want to avoid specifically. And as I say, we can cancel the route if we want to. On the sat nav screen here, down the right hand side, we've got distance to the location, time left, and also an ETA. You can have just one of those up, whichever one you choose to have on the screen will appear in the bottom right hand corner. Personally, I like to leave all three up because it just gives me an idea of how long I've got left. Do I need to have a break? I could look at my driving time. It gives me an ETA, so if I know whether I'm going to be early or late. Also, mileage. Again, looking at fuel, I can see whether I've got the range to do that. As things appear on the screen, you can um, obviously safely pull over and select to stop at the garages and see how far they are if you're needing fuel those types of things so yes let's um think get it programmed in i am actually going down towards southampton docks so um let's get that postcode in and uh head down there and we can see what it looks like when we're actually driving so we're on the move now i've got the sat nav programmed for southampton docks as you can see it's 22 miles away from where we are now it's going to take us just about half an hour to get down there one of the features i do like about this sat nav is it does show you a good view of the roundabout where it is it gives you a bird's eye view which i'll be able to show you when we get down to the roundabout in just over five miles nearly six miles time now you can already see it's telling me that I'm going to need junction three. Of course, things can change when you get down there, so you can't just rely on the sat nav. Of course, you need to read the road signs and the road markings, but at least I know that it's going to be junction three when I get down there. Of course, I've been to Southampton docks many times. I still always program the sat nav, because like I say, it lets me know my ETA down there for my booking times. Just coming up to the roundabout now, the Winnell roundabout at the bottom of the A34, and the sat nav should change over from its normal navigation screen over to the overview of the roundabout as we approach that little bit closer. So there we go. Now, as we join the roundabout, we follow the road round, 
and the view has changed there if you noticed it what that means is it's locked in that position now so that as you're navigating your way round the roundabout the view doesn't change so you're not confused as to exactly where the exit was thinking you're going to miss your, miss your exit it's something I found quite helpful particularly when I was first starting out driving lorries making sure I was in the correct lane at the roundabout but obviously concentrating on traffic and what's going on around you and then having to worry about has my sat nav moved have I missed my junction and all of those types of things so locking it in place is definitely a big help as you can see we're navigating our way around coming off for the junction and then it diverts back to its normal navigation mode from there. Another feature that I like on this sat nav is the way that it shows you junctions. As we approach this junction down at the bottom of the M3, the screen will change and will show you a view of the junction. As you can see on the screen at the minute, it is already telling me I need to be in one of the two left-hand lanes. But as we get closer to the junction, that will change to be an actual view of the junction. Not an exact view. You'll understand what I mean when it appears on the screen. So there we go, the screen's changed over. Let's say it's telling me I need to be in the left-hand two lanes and the right-hand two lanes to be avoided as you can see at the top of the screen that bit is not lit up we've also got the two arrows on the screen as well each one of the junctions that you go on to gives you that sort of view and they are similar looking to the junction itself so if there is one lane on the exit typically there will be one lane shown on the sat nav screen if there is two lanes on the exit there will be two lanes shown on the screen the sat nav does come with lifetime map updates which is pretty standard across all sat navs one feature that it doesn't have that a lot of people do want is live traffic updates now when the sat nav costs less than 100 pounds for a truck sat nav where you can program height weight length width all of those things yes it's one of the features that aren't going to be included to help keep the costs down uh, I've never had any issues with it. It does have a feature where it takes historical traffic data and analyzes that for the times that you're going to be arriving at key areas and factors that into ETAs. But of course, traffic varies from day to day. Um, yeah, I personally think it is a very good sat nav. I've had one with a similar software or the same software on it different make but the same software it's always worked it's always got me to where I needed to go where I can see the sat nav being most useful is for someone who wants a second sat nav I know a lot of drivers that use two sat navs they often give them different routes so at least then they've got an option or even having one as a spare sat nav the other people who I think will benefit most from this one is new drivers it's a very cost effective sat nav that allows you to put your height weight length width all of those sorts of things into it and it's going to be much safer than using google maps which will inevitably send you down a country lane or under a low bridge that yeah it's just going to result in you losing your job well there we go i've taken you through some of the features that i find most beneficial for the sat nav if you are thinking of purchasing one there is a link in the description below so yeah please click that link i don't get anything out of that there is nothing for me from there it's just the link so that you know exactly where you can go to get the exact one that that i am using here today for this review if you do get one please let me know in the comments what you think about it what you features you liked and what you found most beneficial and yeah thank you very much for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did please like comment subscribe all of those good things and I'll catch you in the next one.